As the legislature wraps up its work this session, we're looking forward to summer in Minnesota, days at the lake, the state fair, and fireworks. Senator Jason Rarick introduced a bill this session that would expand the kinds of fireworks that can be used in Minnesota, and he now joins me in the studio. Welcome. Thank you for having me. What types of fireworks are currently allowed in Minnesota, and what would you like to see allowed in Minnesota? Uh, so currently what you can use is what they uh, define as spark emitting and ground based. So every, any, anything that sits on the ground and just shoots sparks, say, 15 to 20 feet into the air or sparklers. Um, what I would like to expand to would be what is defined as aerial and audible. So uh, things that will shoot into the air, whether that's bottle rockets, uh, Roman candles, or the larger uh, mortars. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. And that's, uh, I think we see a lot of those being used around the state. And I think you know, we should be bringing in that revenue. That's well, and you said audibles too, like mm -hmm. give, can you give an so example? Firecrackers so firecrackers. Be, yeah. So most okay. of the spark emitting don't make much noise. Right. Um, these would have the boom that goes with. Right, right. So I've lived in states most of my life that only allow the fireworks that Minnesota allows. And yet I've known so many people who, as the fourth approaches, they take their road trips to the states that have more forgiving fireworks laws and they stock up and they bring them back and they use them anyway. Is this bill for those kind of hardcore fireworks lovers? Uh, you know, it's a combination. Um, that's part of it. We are completely surrounded now um, by states that sell the aerial and audible. Iowa just passed it a year and a half ago. So now all five states or four states around us um, will sell them to Minnesotans. And especially Wisconsin, their law is specifically written to sell to Minnesotans. It's much more difficult for a Wisconsin resident to buy there than it is for a Minnesotan. And um, so this does allow Minnesotans to travel less distances to get them, but I do believe there are other people that uh, would like to use them. They're just afraid to, to go out and do it because it is against the law. Right, so how, let's talk about just the taxes on this. How much would the state bring in if we were to have the same legalized fireworks that all of our neighbors do? Yeah, you know, it's been a few years since they've done a fiscal analysis, but I remember back uh, when Representative Creasel brought the bill, the estimate then was four to five million dollars in sales taxes alone. And I believe um, the reports that I've seen is we've actually grown, more people are using them. Um, and then there's also the issue of allowing Minnesota companies to sell them here, that's more revenue as well. So I believe it would be in excess of $5 million a year. So a new revenue stream. Uh, I noticed that your bill does have bipartisan support. Senator David Tomasoni signed on to it, but the bill did not get a hearing this session. Do you know why? Um, one of the biggest reasons was because uh, the special election that I was in in January, um, I was not into the Senate until into February and then kind of getting acquainted with the way things uh, operate in the Senate compared to the House. And so by the time I got the bill submitted and asked for the hearing, the Judiciary Committee was pretty much booked up. Um, they had over 500 bills already um, requesting hearings. So um, I've been working with uh, Senator Limmer and hopefully we will get our hearing next year. He's pretty willing and open if we can fit in the schedule. Now, Governor Dayton vetoed a similar bill back in 2016, citing safety concerns. So what do you have to say to people who are worried about the safety, especially of children, if you can have these explosive aerial devices available? You know, especially when it comes to children, I've looked at the numbers and 90% of injuries for children come from sparklers and the ground emitting, the type that are already legal in Minnesota. So the injuries, um, to children especially, are, the danger is already there. And when you drive around the state, people are already using them. The difference would be the fireworks companies would be committed to running the public service announcements, things that talk about safety, uh, things that aren't on the air in Minnesota right now. So it all comes down to personal responsibility, um, being learning how to use them correctly and, and following through on that. But if this did become law in Minnesota, there would be an educational component along with it to make sure that kids are kept far enough away and, and all of those things. Yeah, the fireworks companies have told me they would start running public service announcements. They run those ads in other states where the aerial and audible are legal, and that would happen in Minnesota as well. For at least the two weeks surrounding the 4th of July, I see bottle rockets and I hear the booms from my neighbors almost every night. 
To what degree is the law that's banning these being enforced, to your knowledge? For the most part, it's not being enforced at all. Um, a couple years ago, the city of Minneapolis uh, came out and in a public announcement said, please don't report, we're not going to respond. And you know, in, a, in extreme cases, I believe they will respond, um, but for the most part, that's just not something that they have the time and the resources to respond to. So as long as people are being responsible and not to, you know, uh, one of the changes I'm making to my bill is putting an hour uh, hours of use on because you know what nobody wants to suddenly be awakened at one or two in the morning by somebody using fireworks and I understand that. So from your point of view this is uh, this is basically just having the law catch up with common practice. Correct. Uh, I don't know if you're aware but last year the city of St. Paul canceled its 4th of July fireworks display and I would guess that some people would maybe like to just have their own family events with bottle rockets and these aerial things, especially for cities and towns that maybe are struggling with budgetary issues and are potentially canceling their own fireworks display. Are you hearing about that from just a regional or local standpoint, you know, people, cities, towns choosing not to have fireworks? You know, a, a lot of it has come from the the insurance costs, uh, things like that, the, the liability is what's driving a lot of these towns away from doing the public displays. And so I think that's where some of the individuals and families are looking to supplement that. And, you know, I look at some of my areas around the lakes, um, it almost becomes a competition. And I've heard a lot of people say, you know, they'll get out in the boat or on their pontoon and on one of the two lakes around Pine City. And the displays that have gone on by the private um, cabin owners uh, is more impressive than some of the small town displays just because it's, like I said, almost become a competition between people on the lake who has the better um, deal. Uh, and so people really enjoy that. And it's something that can be done instead of a community maybe having to put forward the money to do that. Uh, is there a regional breakdown on this issue? I mean, you're talking about your region, and I spent one Fourth of July at Lahamadu, and we were on the on the dock, and there were like seven different fireworks displays mm -hmm. going on simultaneously, which was really great. But is there more support maybe in Greater Minnesota than in the urban areas? What are your urban lawmakers? What do they have to say about this? You know, it does fit more in the rural areas. Um, the de population density isn't there, you know, so it's not disturbing as many people. Um, one of, but that's one of the reasons I want to legalize it as well, so that people are willing to talk to their neighbors and let them know it's coming. Um, but there are so many urban uh, legislators who are concerned, um, but the bill was drafted to take that into account. Um, any city or township can pass an ordinance to ban the use of the fireworks within their jurisdiction, because we understand it's not meant for every area. But we need to pass the law for the whole state so that areas that do believe it's good for their area can use them. Senator Rarick, thank you so much. Thank you.